Hi everyone, welcome to or welcome back to my channel. I'm Laura, and today I wanted to take some time, as the title of this video suggests, to talk about how we can change the way that we talk to ourselves. The way that we talk to ourselves is always going to be the most important conversation that we ever have. That inner voice or inner critic is the one that is always talking back to us and letting us know if we can do it, hyping us up, or also bringing us down and making us struggle during the most important meeting of our lives. I think that being able to turn around our inner voice as being a coach for us and something that can help us get through difficult times is going to be infinitely more helpful than an inner voice that is a critic and constantly dragging us down. Chatter consists of the cyclical negative thoughts and emotions that turn a singular capacity for introspection into a curse rather than a blessing. It puts our performance, decision-making, relationships, happiness, and health in jeopardy. Ethan Cross, who is a professor at University of Michigan, brings us this really important definition of when our inner voice starts to fail us, it becomes this chatter and constant noise that is negative. Think about all the times that you've quite literally been in your head. Any of the situations, you can find yourself having self-doubt and negativity in. This can usually come from some sort of fear, whether that be fear of the unknown or just a general lack of confidence. It can lead us to be constantly living in the past or always worrying about the future without any consideration of the present and how we can help make ourselves feel better when we encounter these situations. Today, I wanna to share these tips to help you re-harness this chatter and turn it into something beneficial for us to help solve our problems and help us move forward in our lives. Taken from a lot of what Cross has written in his book called Chatter. This isn't sponsored in any way, shape or form, even though I wish it was. I just really think that what Cross is writing about is really important and learning how we can boost our own mood, productivity, and health. The first section is about working towards self-improvement. The name of the game with self-improvement here is putting distance between you and the problem that you're facing. The first tip is to use distance self-talk. Use the universal you and your own name when you're advising yourself. This emulates the idea of having a friend talk to you through something. Using the universal you also helps to normalize your experience. After all, you as a collective is much stronger than I as an individual. Plenty of people have gone through what you've gone through, so you don't have to feel alone in dealing with this complicated struggle. Or you can literally imagine yourself as being your own friend, which you should be, and what would that friend say to you in this exact moment? How would they cheer you up? How would they make you feel better? Would they say that you're being petty? Or would they say that you're actually being brave and confident? Cross says that distant self-talk is linked with less activation and brain networks associated with rumination, and it also leads to improved performance under stress, wiser thinking, and less negative emotion. The second tip is to broaden your perspective. Along with the previous tip, we can be really prone to catastroph Along the previous tip, we can really be prone to catastrophizing our issues, feeling like the world is crashing around us, tunnel visioning the problems happening to us. This isn't always the most reasonable depending on what you're dealing with, but for a lot of smaller yet meaningful issues like dealing with a friendship breakup, think about other points in your life where you've pushed through difficult challenges similar to this one or how other people that you admire would respond to your situation. Another way to broaden your perspective is to increase the timeline on which you're viewing this problem through. Think about if this problem will matter in 10 days and 10 months and also 10 years even. In the grand scheme of things, a lot of the smaller problems that you are dealing with will not be as large of an issue in 10 months, nevertheless 10 years. You will always have time to deal with your experiences and recuperate. Third is to reframe your experiences as challenges instead. Chatter is often triggered when we interpret a situation as a threat, something that we can't manage. When we're in this fight or flight response, our body is innately stressed and our cortisol increases and a whole host of other things. So let's just try to avoid it altogether. When you're dealing with something as a challenge, it can also help to put things into perspective. When looking at a challenge, you can create micro goals. When you can create micro when looking at a challenge, you can create micro goals for yourself. When you're thinking of something as a challenge, it can help you set up concrete goals so you can actually make actionable progress towards instead of being this lofty experience or situation that you have to put yourself up against. Now that you are a little bit more aware about how you talk to yourself, let's also discuss how we can help other people deal with their own chatter. First is to provide invisible support. Openly asking for help or support can be really difficult for some people, and they can also be scared of just generally opening up. Providing invisible support can be really helpful, and it means that you're helping in ways that are meaningful, but may not be encroaching directly onto others' territory. This can be cleaning around the house, putting the dishes away, taking out the trash. You'll usually see that it's in the form of some sort of chore or housework, but I would also categorize taking them out for dinner, or getting them food in general is not as invisible, but still very supportive and shows a lot of care for them. Second is to address emotional and cognitive needs. When people come to others for help, they have two needs that they're trying to fulfill. 
They're searching for care and support on one hand and concrete advice about how to move forward and gain closure on the other. This might be common advice, but I think it's really important to repeat here. To be a good supporter, you should be tackling both of these needs, emotional and cognitive. Learning how to address their emotional needs by providing them emotional care and support will be really beneficial and momentarily helping them feel better. However, by fulfilling their cognitive needs, that provides them long-term support and also helps them recognize how they can move forward from their situation that they're currently dealing with. Just fulfilling one may help, but usually most of the time people are looking for help with both their emotional and cognitive needs. Third is to be a placebo for someone else. The simple act of encouraging other people and letting them know that you believe in their capabilities can really help to ease chatter. Knowing that the people around you care and support about you is one of the most influential ways that you can help support them. Hopefully most of us are already aware, but if you didn't already know, now you know. I'd also encourage you to take this time as a reminder to send that text to a loved one or a friend that you may not have reached out to and let them know that you're thinking about them and that you are there to support them. Lastly, our environment also plays a huge role in how we talk to ourselves and how we think. For me personally, seeing a unclean and disorganized space also clutters up my mind space. So the first tip is to create an orderly environment. This is pretty much a must for me. Seeing a dirty kitchen is one of the worst sights for me, so now in the evenings, I started to carve out time to just clean up around the kitchen. I also have my routine on Saturdays of going around the house and just cleaning and organizing either the whole house or just a room or two. Honestly, I do still have that junk drawer sitting around though, and I do hope to clean it out before the summer starts. No guarantees though. Of course, physical viewing of nature outside is going to be the best way to take advantage of this, but even viewing images of nature and green spaces on your phone and computer can actually have benefits. The study that Cross provides in his book is actually pretty interesting. In our neighborhood, they measured success of people in an apartment complex that lived in a greener space with plants and trees and other nature things versus those that face the city and had very little greenery. In the group of people that live in the apartment complex, that led to higher grades than students and higher achievement comparatively to the people that didn't have that green space available to them. So if you live in a highly walkable environment or just a green filled space, definitely take advantage of that to your own well-being. I know that chatter isn't going to be easy for you to manage just in one day, but as you slowly start to implement these kinds of tips, we can start to reframe the ways we talk to ourselves and train that inner voice in our heads to be beneficial for us and not harmful. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you all next week. Bye.